agree with me. There's nothing because in his presence there's healing. In his presence we are touched. We are changed. That's what the Bible says. As we behold his glory, we are changed from one level of glory to another. Amen. And many times we don't even notice that we've changed, but something has happened on the inside. Praise God. And it's all about intimacy with him. Hallelujah. Some of us relate with God that way. You know, if he's God, then he would, he, he would, he would, he would do it. And yes, he would do it. I'm just going to be here. You know, but you need to engage him. Praise God. You need to engage him. Sometimes you need to negotiate. Sometimes you need to, you know, just have that discussion. That's out of a relationship. Praise God. You know, we are born to solve problems. Wherever you are, things won't remain the same. They couldn't leave Jesus alone, you know. Oftentimes he was led to places. He was led to Lazarus, whatever, to, to heal him. By the time he got there, he was dead. But he still raised him up. Praise God. And, you know, uh, I'm trying not to digress too much. Martha was angry with him. <laughs> but Mary, in her pain, still worshipped him. Remember the story? Mary and Martha, two sisters. And one really loved the Lord and one um, pretended to love him. <laughs> or thought she did. But she didn't quite have that relationship with him. The scriptures were in her head. She knew about the resurrection and all of that. She gave him food when he came into the house. Um, she was the owner of the house. Um, the Bible says Jesus on a certain day was going around with his disciples and he came to the house of a lady called Martha. And her Mary, her sister Mary, lived with her. So you know that one was, um, um, there's a word we use back home, like a slang, squatter. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's why it's good to take care of other people, you know. Mary lived with her, so Martha had done well for herself. She was the big girl, and Jesus would oftentimes come into their house, and Lazarus was their brother, so they were family friends, Lazarus, Martha, and Mary, right? And Martha dashed to the kitchen to start cooking, and cooking is good, amen. Are we not women? Ah, learn to cook, oh, it's good. It's a good asset. <laughs> so you don't always have to go out to eat or to fast, fast foods and all of that, but, you know, she dashed out to, start to her kitchen and started cooking. After all, it was her house, and she was the chief hostess. But the Bible says that Mary did what? She sat at Jesus' feet. She sat at his feet. And Martha got what? Angry. And someone might say, hey, what if that's your calling? I mean, cooking and all of that hospitality. The Bible talks about hospitality. If it's your calling, you'll be happy in it. You'll be joyful in whatever you're doing, and you let others do what they're doing. So if it's your calling to be in the helps ministry or whatever, you'll be happy to set up. Happy to help. Out. I mean, people came here early to set up and do all kinds. You'd be happy to do it because, you know, that's your calling. You won't say, ah, look at this Nikki. You know, she's, she's not doing anything. She's just waiting to take the mic. And we are setting up the chairs. Everybody has their own assignment. You know what I mean? If it's really your calling, you'll be happy to do it. And you won't be envious about other people. So she was in the wrong place. She was in the wrong place at that time. Even it was her calling, but she was not supposed to be there because she was angry. And she came to Martha. No, she didn't, come to she didn't come to Mary, sorry. She came to Jesus, where Mary sat cozily, hearing the word. Amen. Like you've come now, you're sitting here, you've left whoever, whatever behind, right? And God will honor you for that. Amen. And she came to Jesus. Don't you, Master, don't you care that my sister has left me alone to serve? Tell her now to come and join me. And Jesus had to call her twice. <laughs> Martha, Martha, first of all, first of all, for her to calm down. You're worried, it's in Mark chapter 10, you're, you're worried about many things. And one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part, it won't be taken away from her. She has chosen the word. Calm down. I didn't tell you I wanted to eat. So he was trying to tell her that she was wrong at this point in time. But she was angry, she was bitter. Because if she was not, she would have gone to Mary and whispered to her, make sure you listen very well. And then later on, you tell me all the gist. You tell me all. If it was today, she would say, oh, I'll get the tape. <laughs> so that later on, when he's gone, you tell me everything he said. That's what she should have done. Because she was happy to do the cooking. She was cooking her own agenda. 
How do I know? Because if she had asked Jesus when he came in, what would you like to eat? He would have said, don't bother about food right now. Stay. But she just took off. So what was she cooking for him? She felt she knew. She knew him. She knew. And then fast forward. Lazarus, their brother, dies. And for whatever reasons, he's God and is best known to him. Maybe one woman with the issue of blood stopped him on the way. Maybe another one stopped him on the way to get their miracle and all that. And then he ended up being late according to their own standard. Do you think God is coming late for you? He's coming big because he's the lover of your soul. But the foundation is that you have to understand that you're in a love relationship with him. Because if you don't understand, if you're not sure that he loves you and you really love him, if you're not very sure, there'll be times when you'll be shaky. Hello. There'll be times when you keep reviewing the relationship. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's between somebody and I. <laughs> she feels I keep reviewing the relationship. <laughs> and you know, we're like that. And honestly, that's, that's true. That's what human beings do. <laughs> Is she good to me right now? No, she's been mean to me. I strike off her. <laughs> May God forgive us. Because we are human, and many times we focus on the, on the, on the physical, right? Yes. You know, no, she's not be, he's not been nice to me, so I'm going to just put him there. He was here before, but I'm just going to put him there. That's some of us talking about our husbands. And that's because we are not sure of the love that that person has for us. And sometimes some people are bitter and angry with God. But you can't say it because it's like blasphemy. But you take it out on other people. Not greeting, greeting, you know, and all of that. But sometimes it's God you're really angry at. But it's too heavy for you to tell someone that I'm angry with God. Because first of all, they'll be like, not many people might have the patience to encourage you. You can say, ah, God? Oh, no. It's like blasphemy. But she was angry with God. She was bitter. In her heart, it's like, see this man, he calls himself our friend. We're supposed to be family friends. He's eating in my house. I mean, that time she was cooking her agenda was not just the first time he would visit. You know, he's eating my food. He's refreshed himself in my place. He has not prophesied a husband into my life. <laughs> I don't know about Mary if she wants to stay single. But as for me, big house, what for? Hello. How do you know? They were both single. Did you help any man in their life? The only man in their life we heard of was Lazarus. Praise God. Just stay with me. This is how the Holy Spirit interprets it to me. Praise God. Because there's emotional healing taking place here. In Jesus' name. And so all those things were going on in, in her heart. And look at it. Everybody knows that he's close to us. And he's embarrassed us by not showing up for us. They know we have a reputation for how we serve. Uh -uh. If people know, in this church, people know, or uh, in this community, people know that I serve God. Now they're asking, where is their God? And if you're like that, all that is going on in your heart, renew your love relationship with God because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed his mind concerning you. So you need to embrace him again, all over again, and let people know that you are in a love relationship with him, whether he does what you're expecting or not. When, when she, she began to engage him, but she couldn't achieve what she wanted. She wanted Jesus to feel bad. So if Jesus feels bad, so has that brought Lazarus back? Because to her, to heal him would, would be easier than to raise him from the dead. He's dead now. And Jesus said that, look, blessed is he who believes in me. I'm the resurrection and the life. He said, hey, yes, I know that on the last day he will be raised from the dead. <laughs> Madam, too, no. She knew the scriptures in her head. <laughs> so she was arguing with him. Uh-uh. After all, the Bible says, bring forth your reasons and all that. But he was trying to get across to her, I'm here now. Just like the man by the pool of Bethesda. Bethesda. And Jesus came to, her, to him, do you want to be? He said, ah, there's no one to put me in the pool. And he started long story. Hello, this is God standing beside you. And so Mary, she got up. She never questioned Martha. <laughs> she got up. She obeyed Martha. And when she got up, she started going in the direction of where she believed Jesus was coming from. And when she got up, all the women with her, they got up and followed her. Notice when Martha got up, nobody got up. <laughs> because you only follow the worshiper. You only follow the one that has life. You follow that one that will lead you somewhere. She doesn't even have to tell you where she's going. She didn't tell them where she, they just got up. And they, they thought, the Bible says they said, oh, 
Maybe she's going to the tomb again to weep. So even if she was going to weep, they followed. When Martha got up, nobody followed. She went on her own, she came back. When Mary got up, they followed her. And then she was going, going. And when she saw Jesus, when she saw Jesus, the Bible says she said the very same things, the very same words that Martha said. If you had come, my brother would not have died. But there was a difference. The Bible says she fell at his feet saying, if you had come, my brother would not have died. Oh, my God. In your pain, can you still worship him? She fell at his feet. And I say, Mary and the feet of Jesus. All the time. She's either sitting at his feet when the going is good and when the going is not so good, she's still there. It means that you are still God. I can't question you. You're still our lover. I trust you, but I don't know why. I believe that. That was the same. I believe, ah, no, no, no. Jesus couldn't have been there and Lazarus would die. Not on his watch. No. But she said, you are still God. I still love you and you love us. Praise God. And that's in John 11. Jesus, he couldn't even see anything. He groaned. And the Bible says, Jesus wept. John 11, 35. Many of us knew that scripture when we were very young. The shortest verse in the Bible. He could, no need of any long story. No need of scripture, nothing. Only a worshiper could have moved him to tears like that. He wept not because he was sad, not because that was, it was over for Lazarus, but I think he felt, what kind of faith is this? He was touched by Mary's, you know, in her pain, she could still approach him this way. You know, he was touched, felt broken, kind of. But he knew he was coming to raise Lazarus from. He could have said, stop crying, my dear. He's, he's, by the time we get to him now, he's going to, he's going to, I'm going to raise him from the dead. He could have just you know, done that. But he showed his frailty as well. And that was what Martha was trying to achieve. Mm. Made him to cry. We've been crying since. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about tears. Is it the crying that's going to bring the miracle? It's the faith and the trust in his love. It's that trust in his love. And God wants to take us deeper in that love. Because that's what he inspired in my heart. And we're still going to look at another story. One more story of another woman in the Bible. And we know the rest of the story, of course. Jesus, when he wept, all he said, he said, okay, where have you laid him? And then they went. So you can imagine the entourage. All the women that followed her, they saw that act. So they've, they've been taught how to worship, how to go about it. And he went to the tomb and... Within a few minutes, Father, I thank you. Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out alive and well. Hallelujah. These tips, I need tips on how to establish faith in our kids in a secular world. You need to take up a, commi a commitment to pray for that child. Oh, yeah. Like Agatha said, prayer, in fact, is the one weapon we've got and then the other bit we've got is we take them to church and then the most important bit, we need to become tuned in. Social media, what are they watching? Innocent kids go on the internet, they pop and all sorts of things come up. Now this question says, how do you go past referring to the pain you have been through even after you said you have forgiven the betrayal you suffered? Um, well, I believe that sometimes forgiveness is not very easy and you say you have forgiven, but you're still kind of stuck. You keep going back to that point, especially when you remember the pain, the emotions, you know, come back all over again. But I think that it's time to also ask God for more grace to go back into God's presence. Sometimes it's not a one-time thing, really. Sometimes, someone will say, okay, I forgive her, I forgive him, and that was it. Many times it's not like that, depending on how deep the pain is or how long you know, whatever it is that you went through, you ask God for grace again, you know, until you are completely, you know, you're, um, it doesn't affect you anymore. So, you know, we have people in the Bible, great examples of forgiveness, Joseph. Although the Bible doesn't tell us how long it took him to forgive, but we know that he really forgave. And I think that's one of the strongest stories <laughs> in, uh, of forgiveness. I mean, his brothers wanted to, they literally killed him, sold him into slavery and all of that. 
But I believe that while in prison, he had resolved that. He had time to forgive them. Um, I don't think it's when they showed up. He didn't think he would ever see them again. If not, I don't think he might have gotten to where he got to in life. I think because of that, God himself elevated him, you know, by letting go. So I think that um, you just have to ask God for grace again. You have anything to add? Um, it's interesting because betrayal, I remember I was having a discussion with um, a coach and I was asking her that what are the few things in life that can rock anybody's boat? Hmm. And she said betrayal. And when you talk about betrayal, it, the, the wound really, really goes very deep. And in addition to what um, Nike has just said about really coming to God, one of the things we also have to do is understand that we have to take pr some practical steps. And I remember going for um, a training program, you know, on how to become a counselor. And one of the things that really struck me was the fact that you have to get to a point where you either write it down, you know, you write the whole, what I generally say to people is you write it down. Just sit down and write yourself a good letter about what happened. You know, be objective. Don't blame the other person alone because it always takes two. It mm -hmm. always, always always takes two and when a marriage or something breaks down but it's always both parties it's never one person and so when you've written that letter and you know that you're really really honestly sincerely ready to forgive then you take yourself um, a pot you can use a flower pot you can break bread you know take the holy communion you note the date and the time and you burn it. So say today is the 17th of October, or the, let's say it's the 20th of October, or the 1st of November. You note the time, 12 midday, and you burn it in a safe place. I don't want anybody to say, I tried it and I blew up my whole house. <laughs> no. In a very, very controlled, safe place. You know, little pot, it can even be your, or your cooker, and burn it. From that point on, say for instance, it was 12 midday, you begin to say on the 30th of October at exactly 12 midday, I forgave this person. I burnt it off and because your mind needs an anchor. Mm. And if you don't have an anchor, in this, uh, the psychologists and counselors call it closure. Mm. You need to put closure on it. When you've put closure on it, you can then begin to say on so 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 date at exactly 3 p.m., I forgave this person, and I'm not going back there. That way, it's the beginning of the journey. That's um, in addition to the scriptures and going to God for grace. That's one thing. Another thing that we can also do is to um, make sure, just like the Bible says, how many times do I forgive? 70 times 7, 490 times. Realize that we owe it to ourselves. Because, I mean, when you, when you keep on, it's almost mm. like not being, you, it, somebody can hurt you so deeply that you don't even want to move on. Hmm. But who are you hurting? Yourself. They've even forgotten. Most times, they may remember, but the person who bears the pain is the one who really has to deal with it. And I found that when you have a time and a place, you're able to put proper closure to it. And even when the Bible talks about the accuser of the brethren, mm -hmm. our minds can be the accuser too. Mm -hmm. You know, when your mind begins to accuse you, you have a reference point. The Bible mm -hmm. says, I forgive. And on a practical note, I burnt this thing off on so so, -so date. Wow. And that definitely helps to put closure to stuff. Wow, thank you, Abby. That's yeah. very, that, that seems very practical, isn't it? Just having an anchor or something like a faith extender. Yeah. And yeah. what I saw from what she said also again was to keep saying it. Yeah. Confession. Because what you say, not, oh, I can't forgive this person. Yeah. I thought I'd forgive. But to keep saying, no, I forgive him. Yeah. No, devil, I'm not going to think about it. I for Just to keep confessing it until it's totally you're not an issue anymore. Because, I mean, forgiveness, I mean, it's, it's, it's real. But I, another thing that came to me that I should have said that just occurred to me was that said, how do you go past it? Mm -hmm. hmm. One of the things that helped me is also when you have something you're living for, mm -hmm. what is your passion? What have you discovered to be your passion? Because when you discover that, I found that as, much as when I discovered my passion and I began to go 
deeper and deeper into it, and other things began to open up. I found I didn't have much time for, I'm not saying that betrayal and all those things, but I found that it was easier for me to let go. I didn't have time to be dwelling. I didn't even have the luxury of the time to dwell and think pity party or he did it. Because so many other things are happening that God is doing through you, not just for you, but through you. By the time people, by the time people are thanks, receiving healing, deliverance, and whatever, you're counseling other people, you won't have time to think about. You're so busy that there won't be much time. And when you want to think about it, in fact, you, you yourself, you know that God has more than compensated you I now. think sometimes. God has more than compensated you, you know? <laughs> yeah, think, so. I think in addition to that, some, as you're talking, and I know it happens to us as women, sometimes mm. it's just the getting up. Mm. You've been so battered. You've been so bruised. You know you have a purpose. You know mm. when you get busy, you won't have time. But it is just being just able to get, to get your good self up, mm. you know, mm. and, and go. Mm. And the thing is, like um, Nikkei has just said, when mm. you get up and go, you realize, what was I doing down there? Mm. And that's what a lot of ladies say. And if you need support, please find support. One thing find, about us yeah. Christians is this. We, we believe that counselors are demonic. Mm -hmm. You know, if you mm -hmm. go to a counselor, if you go to see a psychotherapist, then there's something wrong with you. But mm -hmm. some of us need therapy. Mm -hmm. Some of us mm -hmm. need, and they're Christian counselors. The course I went for was run, oh, by, yes. it was run by a <laughs> solid Christian organization. And you yes. know what? Another thing, like um, um, Nika was talking about the lady mm. and her lover. Mm. I remember during one of the sessions, you know, it was like, if, you know, any, if we have issues, it's time now to bring it up. And I was closing my eyes and really trying to come up with some issues. So after a while, I said to the lady, look, I'm trying, but nothing is coming. She said, that's the power of the word and worship. She said, when we come into God's presence, when we worship Things drop from us mm. that we don't even, so I'm telling you, issues, when you cry on, I'm telling you, she's, and I will never ever forget, she said, so if nothing is coming to your mind, leave then it, to, don't, to don't start person. trying to look for what is not there, if it's there, it would come later, if there's nothing, and then she said, as Christians, we need to understand that the word of God is so powerful, that if we take the word, you know, how many times should I forgive? 70 times 7. I make up my mind to forgive and I choose to move on. You may not believe it, but if you keep on, you will eventually believe it and you will save so many other people behind you as well. Thank you. Sorry, just... Well, thank Can you. I yes, I wonder. The Bible to... says that where there is strife, there's confusion mm. and there's every evil work. I remember a few years ago, maybe like 15 years ago, and I'm very, very difficult to really get worked up because I generally don't get upset with people. Mm -hmm. I just let them go. But this particular issue really got to me. Mm -hmm. And obviously I had to do the work, but I realized that I had an, I started aching in my back, in my back shoulder. And um, I realized that this issue was giving me stress. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I decided I was going to get over it, and I, I said, no, I can't afford to be feeling achy every day. I'm too young, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so I said, no, I'm going to let go of this thing. And I'm not one to hold on to things. I mean, my mm -hmm. friends know I don't know, hold on to anything. But this particular one just kind of hit beyond mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. threshold and it got me. And, but as soon as I dropped it, I, I, it was a decision I made in my room. I dropped it. I said, I'm not, picky, I'm not holding on to this. I'm not going to go around with an ache in my back because somebody did something. And so it begins, so as soon as I dropped it, the, the aching stopped. Wow. And, 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 and then I, I heard someone say that unforgiveness is like when you are drinking poison and you are expecting it to hurt the other person. So really, we just need to do what the scriptures say. Just yeah. forgive and, and be blessed and enjoy yourself. Praise it's God. for your own good more Praise than it is God. for the other person. Praise God. <laughs>